All right, hey, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? Thanks for coming. It's really great to see you. My name is Phil Dillard. I'm here to, 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 to entertain you and inform you for the next 10 minutes. First, I'm going to start. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm an educator, an entrepreneur, and a lean startup trainer. But before my career as an entrepreneur, I was in the United States Navy. I'm a Naval Academy alumni a former surface warfare officer. I spent seven years active duty in the United States Navy. We did two, I did two tours to different parts of the world, Western Pacific, the Arabian Gulf, Horn of Africa, chasing down bad guys and taking care of people in distress uh, as we do in our fight, fine fighting force. Um, one of the things about military entrepreneurship, I don't come, sorry, military veterans, I don't come from a military family, but we have multiple generations of military service in my, in my family. And when I went to actually the corporate world after business school, after my MBA, and after some consulting gigs, I went into uh, a corporate job at Charles Schwab where I ran the military veterans network at Charles Schwab, an employee resource group of about 1,200 people across the country where we actually uh, built a community to support people inside of the organizations, kind of like David was talking about. So I said that for a little perspective so you understand a little bit where I'm coming from. One of the important things to understand about the military veteran community, like other underserved communities, underrepresented minority groups, is that we're very similar in a lot of ways, but we're not the same. I'm gonna go through some detail about how that's the case so that everybody can understand the, th the key takeaways that I want you to have from this talk, who military veterans are, why they're helpful to you and your organization, why they're great advocates and, and partners for your diversity and inclusion initiatives and how you can help yourself in your organization regardless of what you're trying to be doing, what you're trying to do to actually bring them along with you. I start with some key characteristics about people that, that are in the military. We come from very different beginnings. We come from all parts of the US. We come from urban and rural, liberal and conservative, all sorts of races, demographics, racial demographics, ethnicities, sexual orientation. We have all those different things about who we are and where we're from. We have different experiences in the military. Some of us are in combat environments. Some of us are in support environments. Those are all different as well. And we come with a different set of skills and to build a different set of skills through the training and, and, and development that we get while we're in the military. But the common bond, that common theme of selfless service, of discipline, of people before others, of teamwork, of hard, of hard work, of inclusion, of respecting people about getting the, the job done as opposed to the skin that you're in when you get there, that's the core of what binds us together and makes us similar, similar but not the same. I generally like to start with talking about the numbers. Let's break down the numbers. What I have on this slide here is a, is a breakdown of the population, the adult population of the US. Of about 249 million adults, there are about 22 million living veterans that go from World War II to folks who just got out of the wars of Iraq and Afghanistan. And about 2.7 million of those folks have deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan post 9-11. So if you think about the numbers, that says less than 1% of the US adult population has actually gone and served us in the military, it's pretty clear that there's a high probability that a lot of people in the workplace don't know military veterans, don't know people at active duty. So how do they learn about them? They learn about them through stories, through stereotype, through movies and the media, and not through direct interaction, which is potentially a problem. In this slide, we talk about the breakdown of the diversity of the military by age. The, in the blue is folks who are under 25, 26 to 30 is in the red, orange is 31 to 35, and 35 over is in the green. And what we can tell from this slide is, more than half of the people in the military are under the age of 30. The average person who leaves the military is about 26 years old, and that average 26-year-old from 18 to 26 has had far more life experience in much more interesting and unique and challenging places than their average counterpart who went to high school and college and had a few years of work experience on the flip side. We want to take advantage of that. The folks who are in the older age groups, they're exiting the military and doing this career transition at different life stages than each of these other groups, so there's areas where they separate and can bring a bunch of different value to the workplace. When we talk about the diversity of the military by race or ethnicity, this number, this slide here 
breaks down first column, who's, who, what's the military distribution? In the second, what's the average civilian population distribution? And in the third, what's a best consensus estimate for what it is in the technology industry? And from this we tell, we can understand that the military organization itself is more diverse than the general population and far more diverse than the technology community, community on an on a ethnic or a racial basis. But if you think about this small group that becomes very tightly knit, that lives in tight environments, in highly uncertain, uh, highly uncertain situations, and high risk and high stressful situations of a very young group, this tells you a little bit of something about if you're going to be successful as a team, how you have to engage with the people who are on your team regardless of how they come to work. Another thing that's important about the military veterans, David uh, referenced it in his talk, it's about the importance of education. We're learners who thrive on education and training. There's tons of money spent on education and training and preparation for this, 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 this uh, all-volunteer force. It's not the force of the, of the 70s that's that go to war or go to jail stereotype that you see some of these, from some of, these, uh, some of the things you see in the media. It's actually the hardest to get into the military now than it's ever been the hardest to get in the military now that it's ever been. There's a highest amount of tech. There's high technology. There are some incredible systems. There's space systems and cybersecurity systems and missile systems and all these things that these people are running in all these types of armed forces, on our armed forces. And these are young, young people who are doing this. So you gotta be learning. You gotta be dedicated to learning to be successful in this environment. Finally, we're a healthy organization, a healthy community that's ready to go to work. In preparation for this, oh, can I get that last slide back? In preparation for this, I did, a, did read some surveys about what the perception is about the health status of military veterans. The average American thinks that 60 to 75 percent of military veterans have TBI or PTSD or some form of disability, when the actual number is around 13 and a half percent. So people who are this healthy population who are ready to go out and work, they have the stereotype or a stigma of people fearing that they have the inability to work, uh, or that they're not ready to come to work, and it becomes an excuse not to think about hiring and advancing military veterans to getting them across that threshold into an organization in a similar way that other groups have to get over this. So I want to add to this and share some information about what, how, how military veterans have been successful. This is that military veterans are leaders and innovators. The, the common thing that each logo on this slide uh, has is that the organization was either founded or led as a CEO by a former military veteran. And these are brand names commonly known to everyone in the room. When you think about the technology industry, these are some examples of some successful recent stories with companies that have done financial services innovation, cybersecurity innovation, and even some of these, like in the top right corner, who started their businesses while in Iraq and in Afghanistan as social enterprises that are thriving right now to this day. When it comes down to it, there are people who are making the transition whether they're army, navy, male, female, whichever, these are some trailblazers, examples of some trailblazers who are blasting ahead and leaving something for people behind them to follow. But despite their great successes, the transition itself is difficult and challenging, and this is where they can use some help. So if you're in the room and you say, I understand what the veterans are doing, what's this for me? How can I get some value out of this? This is where we get to the call to action, and I'm gonna recommend three simple steps. The first, think about this from your own perspective. Think about some of your assumptions. Think about some of the things that you, that you know and you don't know about military veterans. People don't want a hand up or a hand out. They're not heroes or victims. They're just human beings who are trying to really move forward in this important career transition. And they are allies in this. We are allies in this movement with other types of groups like, like ours. Think about how you can act. Think about how you can engage. And, and move something forward. Second, we want to talk about looking inside your organization. If you're trying to get to know your organization, there's a lot of insight and information from, for wherever you are. You can look at people who have hired successfully or who didn't successfully uh, grow in your organization. Look at your ERGs. Talk to your friends and families. I talk to lots of people who don't know anything about what their friends and families have done in the military, and those can help dispel some of those myths and create opportunities for, for, for you, whether you're talking about them in hiring or as partners or however else they help your organization. 
Finally, once you've got yourself straight and you're thinking about what you can learn inside of your organization, go outside of your organization to some of these organizations I show in this slide. This is a list of a number of different veteran service organizations that help people in the transitions to jobs, help them in transitions to entrepreneurship, help polish them up and get, their, get them their skills, get them starting these businesses. It's so much better than thanking someone from their service to helping them start a company, to investing in their early stage, to investing in their future, to bringing them into their orga your organization where they can be your partner, and this is a great way to get that started. Now I know that there is a lot of slides, a lot of companies up there, a lot of slides on the, on the last, uh, a, lot, a lot of organizations on the last slide. And what I've been doing over the past year since I spoke here last year is getting to know organizations across the country who are doing this veteran service work, who are trying to hire and engage veterans, and trying to move this, move this whole inclusive community into being more successful to be able to follow in the footsteps of those pioneers. So if you're looking for a way to find more information, you can check, out, check me out and send me some, uh, some information. You can check out a media asset that we've built. It's an organization called Bay Area Brave. It's a Facebook page, Bay Area Brave SF. And the intent of which is to share the positive stories of transition, help you get to know some of these organizations that are out there helping military veterans, and put some information out there that shifts the narrative around who we are, how we can be a better part of the organization, and how we can help drive inclusion inside of your organization as a result. Also, in the, in the early part of next year, we're having a conference where we're bringing some of the folks here to talk to our military veteran organizations and to, to move forward. That's what we got in VetCon 2017. So I'm out of time. I thank you very much for coming along, and I hope you have learned a little something about how military veterans can help you as an ally, as a, as a, as a confidant in your diversity inclusion movement going forward. Thanks so much.